That's a really great question. And so power grids are deceptively simple in how they work. There are plants that generate electricity, then they're connected to high voltage transmission lines. That power is dropped down to a distribution network like the kind that goes to your house. And then we have consumers that use power. If you're a grid operator, your job is deceptively simple. Um, how we use energy electricity varies over the time of day. So you need to produce just enough electricity to meet that demand of consumers. It also varies seasonally. And it also varies um, um, with different types of events, like the extreme cold event that we had down in Texas. In Texas, most electricity is generated by natural gas. They also have a lot of wind on their system. Normally, Texas is what we call a, a summer peaking system, where the highest demand for electricity, remember I said it varied seasonally, is in the summer. But at this time, it was winter, and that's when they had demand that far outstripped what anyone was anticipating. People needed heat, and many places in Texas use electricity to make heat. They also use natural gas to make heat. And most power plants have interruptible gas contracts, and that gas then is preferentially given to residential and commercial customers. But there was a huge problem with the extreme cold. The Texas natural gas plants weren't weatherized to, ex to, to deal with the extreme temperatures. Same with the wind turbines. A lot of them were taken offline because they weren't built or designed to withstand the temperatures in some areas 40 degrees below normal that they were experiencing. And so this shift of infrastructure, you had natural gas wellhead freezing as well as the distribution system and the power plants tripping offline, meant that at one point, the electric reliability of Council of Texas lost about 47% of the available generation on the system. So they started shedding load um, to be able to have the operating margin to not have the whole system collapse. Having temperatures 40 degrees below normal on your system, where your system isn't designed for it, will cause problems. Our engineered systems are designed to operate under a margin of temperatures, water conditions, and everything else, and anything so far outside of that is bound to cause problems if we're not prepared for it. The problem is Texas should have been prepared for it. There was a similar, albeit smaller, event back in 2011, and the National Electric Reliability Council had issued a long <laughs> report detailing how Texas needed to ensure its power plants were winterized as well as its gas collection lines and really think about what operating in cold temperatures would be. Additionally, Texas had very small what we call reserve margins. Remember how we talked about how electricity supply and demand have to meet? A reserve margin is anything over that that you have in the system to ensure that you have enough extra capacity in case something goes wrong. Um, and Texas's reserve margin is, I think in 2024, projected to be at just 7%. Compare that with the New England system, which is projected to be, for the peaking system, at about 27%. And so they've been running on a very lean reserve margin for a bunch of years now. So we live in a world with a changing climate. Our infrastructure is not designed for the world we're moving into. This Texas event is just one highlight of what can go wrong in our systems when they're not designed for the world we're moving into. And so our big challenge over the next decades is to rethink and redesign all of our critical infrastructures, not just energy, to actually be able to work in the climate we're moving into. So let's take this in the short term first. In the short term, the 2011 recommendations from the National Electricity Reliability Council, the NERC report, should be implemented. They need to be implemented. And so this piece of governance and enforcement is absolutely critical for ensuring that this doesn't happen again. The other piece is improve capacity on the system. While some people really say capacity markets are the only way to go, there's lots of ways to ensure that there's extra capacity on the system. And investing in that will help to make the grid more reliable when these types of extreme events go on. With a changing climate, we actually need to transform not only how we make energy, but how energy connects with the rest of society how energy connects with healthcare, how energy connects with transportation, how energy connects with education. And that's what we're trying to do here at the Irving Institute for Energy Society, is making sure that we're asking societally focused questions for our energy systems of the future. Thanks very much.